Hey guys, it's Dawn, and today I have a fun technique of stamping on craft. Now, normally when you stamp on craft, your colors are darker or muted. I'm gonna show you how to get a brighter look by stamping white first and then stamping on top. We'll be using the Little Bit stamp set. I love this stamp set. I got tired of searching through all of my sets for that little heart or that little star or that little something, so I put them all together in one affordable $6 set. And for the sentiment, we'll be using the Festive Greetings sentiment. Now this is just a great set full of fun fonts for the holidays. I'm going to start by stamping my sentiment first, and we're using Deck the Halls. Now, I'm doing this first because it's going to be a wreath that encases the sentiment, and this is going to give me an idea of where to start stamping that wreath. I'm going to cover the entire card panel here with my embossing buddy bag, and what this does is removes any static electricity from the cardstock. That way, when I stamp this in my Versamark ink, the embossing powder will only stick to the areas that are covered with the Versamark. I'm going to use my grid mat to eyeball the center. I measured off about two and three quarters of a block from the edge of the sentiment to the edge of the cardstock on each side and then just stamped. Now if you don't have a grid mat, you could use a ruler and just mark the center of your cardstock. And since this is a four letter word, <laughs> it's a four letter word, um, you'll know to stamp the uh, sentiment right in the center of that uh, center. <laughs> now I can't even talk. Right in the center of your middle mark. Does that even make sense? So I'm using the card base to catch any overflow of embossing powder. And here I'm using the Wow Super Fine um, Ultra White Embossing Powder. I really like this one for capturing detail. And since the sentiment is uh, sketched, I wanted to retain that detail. I didn't want it to turn into one solid block. I wanted to capture that sketched line look. So now I'm just going to heat emboss this until it's melted. And then I'll just funnel the excess right back into the container. I'll be stamping all of our images first in our white pigment ink, and this is a great pigment ink. It's very solid, it's very bright, and it shows up really well on dark cardstocks. So I'll be using the circle images from this set. Now there's stars and hearts and sequin shapes, and you could do the same technique with any of these shapes, but for today we're just going to focus on the circles. And I'm going to go ahead and mount all the ones I'll be using to two blocks. I'm going to mount one on each side, and you'll see here that I'm mounting one on one corner and the other on the other corner. And this is just so I can see through the block and neither image is blocking my view from either side. Now I, my cardstock did warp a little bit while I was heat embossing and this happens from time to time. And normally I wouldn't worry about it, but since I'm gonna be doing a lot of stamping, I went ahead and taped down my cardstock with some washi tape. This will keep any area from prematurely hitting my stamp before I'm ready for it. So I'm starting with the largest dot and I'm going to stamp this out in that circular shape. Um, I'm keeping that wreath shape in mind and you'll notice that I'm doing this in a triangular pattern and this is going to help me keep balance between the size of the dots that I'm um, stamping down. I won't have too many large ones on one side and too many small ones on another side. So just stamping in that triangular pattern helps me to get balance right off the bat. Now again I'm keeping in mind that, tr that uh, circular wreath shape and if you are not comfortable with just winging it, you could always trace out using a, a die or the bottom of a cup or anything that you have on hand to create your circle. Just remember you will want to erase any of your lines before you stamp over them because the ink will trap that graphite underneath and you won't be able to erase it afterwards. So again, if you do draw your circle, just make sure that you erase the areas that you're about to stamp before you actually stamp. So I've moved on to the second largest dot, and I'm going to continue to fill this in, working my way down to the smallest dot. And I'll use that smallest dot to just fill in any areas that I think are um, a little bare, or if I need to pull the circle out a little further on the top or on the bottom to make it seem more rounded, that's where I can use this littlest dot to kind of fake it. And you'll notice that I've overlapped a lot. That's completely fine. We're not going to be stamping over all of these circles. We're going to leave some of them just plain white. And once you're satisfied with how it looks, you're going to leave this to dry. You'll want that white ink to dry completely in order for those colors to be as vibrant as possible when you stamp over them. If the ink is still wet, it's going to mix with the colors that you're stamping over top and it's going to make them lighter. For our overstamping, we'll be using a new favorite combo, some Sweet Nectar, Lake House, and our Old Gold ink. Love this color combo, especially for Christmas. It kind of reminds me of um, like a shabby chic color combo and I really like it paired with this craft. Starting with the largest circle, I'm going to start selectively over stamping some of these dots. 
You'll notice that I slightly offset it. Now this is going to add a lot more interest than it would have had I stamped um, completely lined up over the circle. One, I am extremely lazy when it comes to stamping and I didn't want to bother with exact lining up. Two, I think it just adds a lot of depth with very little effort because I get that nice bright white on one edge, I get the color in the center, and then I get that nice almost shadow where the color is stamping directly onto the craft. It's, like I said, it just adds so much interest with very little effort. When switching between colors on the same stamp, I always do a little stamping off first. Make sure that I get off any of that residual ink from the previous color because it could contaminate the final color that I'm about to stamp. So in this case, it, it wasn't too bad, um, but sometimes I don't thoroughly clean my stamps. So I just make it a habit to always do a test stamp off on scratch paper first. This will, again, make sure that I don't have any color contamination. And two, if there's any debris on my stamp, then I will see it in my impression and I will know to clean my stamp and I won't ruin a whole project. Just continue switching between your colors and over stamping uh, your dots. Now remember, try to keep it in a, a triangular pattern with your color. This will help balance your color. Again, you don't want a whole bunch of large solid dots on one side and the same way you don't want, say, a whole bunch of the pink on one side. You'll want to keep your color balance as well. And you'll notice here that um, I'm trying to, there, I needed a pink up in that top left corner, so I added it in, but I didn't want to do it with the same large dot, so I made sure to um, switch to a smaller dot so it would be a little more balanced. And just continue filling in your wreath with those pops of color. Remember to leave some of them white. We're stamping on craft, so these colors, if you filled all of them in, they could quickly become muddy. That white creates a great break for the eye visually, and it also ties in the sentiment to the background. For the rest of the sentiment, I wanted to mimic the overstamping that we've done in the background. So I've used our basic banners die and I've die cut it from our white cardstock and from a piece of vellum as well. Now I'm using a sponge dauber to color that white cardstock so that it will exactly match our stamping that we have in the background. And then on the vellum die cut, I'm going to stamp the halls in Versamark ink. And then I'm going to use that same bright white ultra fine wow embossing powder to heat emboss it. When I heat emboss vellum, I like to heat it from the front, and then when it's all done, I like to just heat it just a little bit from the back as well, and this helps me to reduce the amount of warping that I get. And I'm adhering that to the banner that we colored with the Sweet Nectar using some vellum adhesive. Now, layering these two together is going to give me that nice, soft look that mimics the overstamping in the background. To create a little bit of movement, I adhered it using a piece of foam tape in the center of the banner, and then I adhered the ends of the banner directly to the card panel. Now all I have to do is adhere the card panel with some foam tape to a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. So here you can see a simple layout, simple to execute, but definitely a little more impactful than just your normal everyday stamping. Plus, I love that I can get that color to show up so true and so vibrant on craft cardstock. So there you have colored stamping on craft cardstock, thanks to the help of that white ink. You can find all the featured W Plus 9 supplies at wplus9.com. If you want more information on this project, along with any of the products used and some alternate versions of this design, you can find that on our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. The link is also below. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.